Good morning, Central. Monday morning. Always good to start the day off together and the week off together. Take a moment and say hello to everybody who has signed in, and let's get this day off to a great start. You know, one of the ways that we learn in Scripture is through the mistakes of others. And it's really a pretty simple process. You just look at what someone else does. There might be some indicator about whether the thing they did was right or wrong. You might get to see the consequences, and then you learn from their mistakes. It's not too complicated, really. Learn from someone else's loss, someone else's pain, someone else's outright rebellion, and you can avoid it yourself if you're willing. Adam and Eve were deceived. It led to all kinds of problems, so don't be deceived. Cain killed his brother and was banished by God, so don't commit murder. Abraham lied about his relationship to Sarah, and Sarah was nearly taken as someone else's wife. Don't lie. Jacob deceived his brother, and the hardship it created in their family went on for years, even generations. Don't ruin your relationships. And there was a prophet of God named Jonah. We have his story for similar reasons. Watch what Jonah did. Don't do that. Jonah isn't just a great story for kids. Jonah is cited by Jesus as an important sign for the world today. The earliest Christians recognized the importance of Jonah's story in the underground catacombs where a lot of second century Roman Christians met to worship. The symbol of Jonah appears a lot as art that is a sign of hope in the resurrection. So meet Jonah, son of Amittai. You've probably heard his story. You may have even seen the first full-length Veggie Tales movie that was made about Jonah. The simple story is divided up into four chapters of the book that's named after him. I like to summarize it this way. Jonah's swallowed because he rebels. Jonah prays and gets expelled. Jonah preaches, so God is trusted. Then Jonah whines and gets adjusted. I want to start this short story this morning and just leave it with a simple lesson, a lesson about running from God. Jonah chapter 1, starting in verse 1. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, for their evil has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. If you could look at these places on a map, you would see God told Jonah to go east. He jumped on a ship headed for Tarshish, which was headed west towards Spain. Like it says in verse 3, ironically, away from the presence of the Lord. Of course, there's no running from the presence of the Lord, and that's what the story shows. There's some sense in the story that calls us to say it out loud. You can't run from God, silly. But sometimes we do, don't we? And that's where we learn from Jonah, first of all. If only Jonah had remembered the 139th Psalm. Verse 7, it says, Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. There's a sense in which knowing that you can't run away from God is scary. Jonah had an attitude problem. Later in the book of Jonah, we'll learn he was afraid that God would be merciful to the people of Nineveh, and he didn't want that. So he chose to try to run from God by ship away from the presence of the Lord. When you know that you're living in outright rebellion to God, 
Knowing that God is always with you isn't really what you want. That's when you run, when you don't want God to see what you're doing. But there's also a sense in which knowing that God is always with you is a wonderful thing. David, the writer of Psalm 139, was taking comfort in the fact that God was with him. It awed him, overwhelmed him, but it was also wonderful to him. That's how it's supposed to be. God repeatedly says to his people throughout Scripture, I'm with you, and that's supposed to be a good thing. So today, stop with me and consider which of these responses sounds like you. Does the idea that God sees everything make you cringe today, or does that bring you comfort? If it makes you cringe, you might want to read the story of Jonah anew today. Jonah was running from God, and we'll see how the problem was he had some heart issues. Cringing at the idea that God sees and knows all about us is an indication that we've got some things that need to be changed. How much better would be today to take comfort and joy in the fact that God knows everything about us, sees everything about us? Well, that comes when we're living in a right relationship with him. Let's pray about that as we start this week together. Father, today, as we begin a look into the story of Jonah, I pray you'll help us to examine our own hearts, to learn from his rebellion, his mistakes, his heart that needed to be changed. Lord, remind us today of your promise that you will never leave us or forsake us. And I pray that that thought, that we meditate on that thought as we think about it, it'll bring us comfort because we want you close and we need you close in our lives. Help us to learn from the mistakes of others also, Father, what you want us to learn. And I pray this week, from day to day, you'll remind us that you're near, that we'll take great comfort in that. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. I'm going to remind you, if you find some kind of help in what you hear from God's Word here today, would you take a moment and share this post with somebody that you know needs to hear it? Lord willing, I plan to be here. We'll continue in the book of Jonah this week, and I'll be saying good morning, Central. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day. Let's have a great week.